can go. Uh, looks great. Looks cool. great. Okay, thanks. Um, so as Kathleen said, um, I wanted to do research because I'm in Louisiana because I'm from Louisiana. Um, and the pictures that we'll see throughout are from a place that I grew up in. Um, this is actually a lake. It's kind of on a bayou. There's bayous off Lake, Lake Bissonneau. Um, so all the pictures are from places that I grew up in. Is it moving? Okay, there we go. So my questions were, um, everyone has this outsider view of Louisiana as a, um, we're so resilient with the, with the hurricanes and storms and such. And um, I wanted to know what the relationship between place attachment and place identity was, and um, especially specifically in Louisiana and how these place identities can be impacted from external factors, whether it be, you know, over time, moving climate factors, whatever it may be. Um, okay, so first we'll get into the landscape of Louisiana. Um, this shows the whole Mississippi River um, and how it drains uh, into the Gulf of Mexico into uh, out of like right south of New Orleans. Um, so about 20,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice, ice age, glaciers began to melt and recede and the sea levels rose. And then as they receded, um, the Mississippi River would refill sediment into the delta areas, into the shorelines, layer by layer. And then whenever the sediment influx was too high, it would find its way to a new place to get to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and this left in its wake um, bayous and cuyas and swamps and all the land features that we have in Louisiana today. Um, and over time, so subs subsidence um, can be natural or anthropogenic in Louisiana. So the anthropogenic factors would be um, oil and gas, the dredging of the swamplands, the development, the navigation channels, and way at the cypress trees and everything that holds the sediment and the deltas there together and saying um, was gone because of all these anthropogenic activities. Um, and so that exacerbated coastal erosion. Um, and with the subsidence, Louisiana sinks one inch every three years, and they've lost 20,000 square miles of land since the 1930s, as you can see there. And they lose a football land, a football field of land every year. Um, so with all of the subsidence, natural, anthropogenic, and the coastal erosion, uh, you have saltwater intrusion, which eats away at the wetlands. Um, so they have a massive wetland loss um, in coastal Louisiana, which leads to barriers, um, wetland barriers being eroded, which we will get to in later on. Um, but first off, I thought it was important to talk about what a bayou is and what a swamp is and the difference um, and what it looks like in Louisiana, where they all are. Uh, if you can see bayous are, they follow basically the river line um, and they're all over the state. A bayou is, uh, has an inflow and outflow of water um, and it comes from the Choctaw tribe where bayouk, which means small stream. Uh, but they can be tiny or colossal, and they are intertwined throughout the whole state, and they all play their part in the process of replenishing sediment to the deltas and the marshlands and keeping the ecosystems thriving. So now we're going to get into the people of Louisiana, um, the natives. This is a map of where the tribal groups originated from and or not originated from, some of them moved west of the Mississippi after the um, Indian Removal Act. Uh, they took solace in the bayous and freedom. Um, and some were just there indigenously and followed as the sea levels receded, um, made homes in the bayous and adapted to the changing lands. Um, so following the natives, there, were, there was an influx of immigrants. They were um, Spanish, we'll get to that in the next slide, but first we'll talk about the natives. Um, whenever the Europeans first explored Louisiana or uh, South America or this land, um, they noted like 1300 to 1500 native people living in the territory speaking 22 different distinct languages, um, which will come into play later on. I just want to uh, um, emphasize the diversity and how everyone came to be who we are um, and it'll it'll come into play with our identity um 
So it is cliche to say that Louisiana is culturally diverse because it can mean so many things coming from Louisiana. Um, as you can see here, the French Creole, Belgian, the Czech, Croatian, Filipino, German, Greek, Hungarian, Italian, Vietnamese, and other Asians, Asian descent. Um, so few people realize the degree of complexity and variation of the people of the state um, and the monumental role that it played in shaping not only the cultural environment, but the people of Louisiana and their relationships to the land. Um, and the next thing I want to say, so this like different influxes of people there, um, I feel like it's important to say, two thirds of the Africans in Louisiana arrived before 1730 came from Senegambia, which is a West Africa. I probably might have said that wrong. Um, some were slaves of Francophone West Africa. Um, others were free people of color from the Caribbean after the Haitian revolution in 1804 um, and brought another wave of African Louisiana to Louisiana. Um, which included the free people of color. And they brought to Louisiana the shotgun style house, which um, I don't know if anyone really knows what that means, but it means you can shoot a shotgun to the front door and the bullet will go out the back door. Um, it's a very popular style of house in New Orleans area, South Louisiana. Um, and they also brought voodoo, uh, the religion um, from the Caribbean. Um, and that's just a little bit of the heritage of where everyone comes from. And now we can get into climate impacts. This is um, all of the hurricanes, category one through four, tropical storms, depressions that have hit Louisiana um, over the past decade. Um, and I think it's important to note um, for Katrina goes through here, which in the same year was Rita and Rita went this way. Um, I just think that's important to note for people that they weren't in the same area. They were um, on opposite sides of the coast of Louisiana, so it was a um, devastating time. Um, I really just wanted to show this for the impact of how it is. Um, and then we we'll talk about sea level rise. In the bottom left um, is today. Uh, this is in 2067 with no action, and there are coastal master plans and different parishes getting involved in making a plan for this and accounting for the people. But I do think it's important to note too that not until recently in the past two years of Louisiana have a comprehensive statewide watershed plan, um, which is important, I uh, feel in this area. Um, sea level rise will be, is predicted to rise between 1.41 and 2.7 feet by 2067. And this can displace up to 1.2 million people. Um, and we will look at that here. Um, this is the LA Safe plan, uh, coastal remaster plan. They're working with them on that. This is their um, data, but it shows that everyone just moves a little bit up the coast, just a little bit up the bayou, which is historically what the people of this area have done. They would ride the storms out on their boats up the bayou or go see, go stay with family that wasn't going to be affected on. Um, you know, in different areas. It's just like family ties are very important. Um, so this is that little view there. And then we will talk about the people of Ob Jean Charles. This is something I learned about that I did not know um, was going on. But these, the Ob Jean Charles is uh, the Biloxi Chinamacha Choctaw tribe. And they were um, relocated here from the, after the Indian Removal Act. Um, in the map, you can see this is where the place is located, and this is the, on the right is the only road leading in and out of the community. Um, and since 1955, land is shrunk by 98%. Uh, peak population was 300 people, and now there's only 26 left. They did get a grant for $48 million in 2016 to start the resettlement process. So they will be Louisiana's first climate refugees or being relocated by the government related to climate reasons. And now we'll get into my study. So I interviewed 10 people. Um, I wanted to do 15 to 20, but after doing 10 and an hour long, the inter each interview was a lot, but all I could get was 10. Um, you had to live in Louisiana um, for 10 consecutive years from the ages of zero to 25. Um, 
which I thought was important because I have a lot of friends that move away that still have that strong connection to place and still identify with Louisiana. So that's why it was, you, you could not live there and still participate. Um, so I went through community leaders, friends, family ties, and we did a snowball sampling where they would refer other people that they thought might be interested in participating. Um, it was unstructured and it was oriented to place to try to go through the process of growing up in Louisiana, life-changing events and how you see your place in the future. Um, yes, and so now, oops, sorry. Next is this map. So my participants were ages 23 to 83. Um, six of the 10 still live in Louisiana and three of the 10 moved away and returned. And if you look at the green areas, this is where all of my participants were from. Uh, West Monroe, Monroe, Shreveport, Lafayette, Crowley, Abbeville, uh, New Orleans, Chalmette, Gretna, and Metairie area. Um, so that just puts in, I tried to get people that were spread out and not as much in the same area. Um, so just a little background, sense of place. Um, it expresses emotion of feeling attached locally and it results from experiences, interactions, and it can be socially constructed, but that's where I moved to place identity as is it um, <clears throat> mobile or is it immobile type um, thing? And how is that affected over time? Um, and place that in use experiences, relationships, uh, interactions connected to a location that you use to create your or construct your concept of self, your self identity, who you are um, based off where you come from in a way. Um, and so now we'll get into my results. So these are a few of my favorite quotes that I thought fully represented like place identity. Um, I wanted to do it in a person, like a narrative type and tell the story of each person, but I couldn't really do that. Um, and I don't think I should read it out. So I'm gonna like wait a few seconds and let everyone just read a few of these quotes. Um, my most favorite of this was um, Louisiana is such a complex, rich and heavy place historically in so many different ways, it's a mosaic. Um, and then another common thing was people say, even if they moved away, moved away, moved back, I'll always say I'm from Louisiana, which I thought was very interesting. Um, and there's another study that I read about that um, was on Black Creoles, which I did not mention before. The difference between Cajun and Creole is Cajun are from Acadian descent. Um, which means they were French settlers that were sent to Nova Scotia area, the Canadian Maritimes. They were um, exiled because they would not bow to the British crown. And they came to South Louisiana where there was already a French Spanish type colony of their type people. Some of them went back to France, but of the population that came to Louisiana, they're considered Cajun. Creole means that you're born in Louisiana or in the French colony or French descent and you were born in the French colony. So all Cajuns are Creole, but not all Creoles are Cajun. Um, just a little backstory that I learned from this too, but um, next slide. Uh, sense of place and attachment. Um, my favorite one would, I guess, to be the bottom one. I felt like the roots growing up here have run really deep in me and I will definitely always cherish the community and the family and I think culture, the food, the attitude towards, to, towards life is really wholesome. Um, and another common theme I saw is that people were searching for their identity of becoming, like coming from this gumbo pot of melting of all these different things. They wanna know where they came from and why that their ancestors made the decisions to put us in the place we are, I guess now, which I thought was very interesting. And then longstanding ties, of course, um, the people and that's a very common um, theme I found. Uh, lots of sharecroppers and farmers and tenant farmers that have been there um, for ages. Um, and then this bottom one, the Joseph Guillory um, said he did a whole research into his genealogy and where he came from and why, because he took a trip to get a French credit to Nova Scotia and learned about the Canadian Maritimes and the Acadians and things like that. So I, I noticed a uh, a search for identity type of um, which I related to place identity. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot more to explain it. 
Um, importance of family was another one. Um, people move back to be close to their family if they did move away, whether it be like flood related, job related, they move back because of that support of their family ties and their community. Um, they felt secure in that fact. They loved the culture. They wanted just to be around their people. And then I didn't specifically ask about climate impacts, but it was brought up in almost every interview, whether they still lived in Louisiana or not. Um, and another common, like related back to the heritage and identity, um, I found a lot of like this one, the link between language, law, language, land loss, climate change, and the link between food and culture and land loss is that these people are losing their land that is so much built the culture and the people and the heritage. So how is that gonna affect your identity with loss of place? Rachel, you're at 15 minutes. Okay, well, that's it, last one. So discussion is, I just think that there um, could be more research into place identities and if they're mobile or immobile and if, um that can have any impact on decision making um and the processes that stem from self-definition and place attachment specifically in louisiana in our fight against the climate crisis 